Yes, bravo. <laughs> yeah, I would like to say amen. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful way to start this muggy morning. <laughs> muggy? Thank, muggy, muggy, oh. muggy. <laughs> Thank you, Sue and Janice. Good morning. Welcome to Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, an open and affirming church where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. First in our announcements, we'd like to welcome the family of Larry Bentley, who's celebrating a 90th birthday. Thank you all for joining us today, and happy birthday, sir. Today is also a special day. It is our homecoming Sunday, rally day, where we have a potluck luncheon in the fellowship hall afterwards. It's about 10 degrees cooler, I think, in there, uh, maybe. Sure. Uh, so please join us for food and fellowship. Uh, and potluck, you never know what you're going to get, um, but there was some good stuff. Lots of good desserts I saw. Some of the other reminders, uh, Monday morning prayer and Bible study starts at 11 a.m. every mor Monday morning. You're welcome to come to Dutton Hall or join via Zoom and contact the church office to get the Zoom for that. Um, I was informed that the church council meeting is this coming Tuesday, September 12th at 7 p.m., and that's open to all. Uh, Women's Fellowship is meeting at 10 a.m. on Wednesday with a brunch prior to that. Community Meals is now serving hot sit-down lunches in Dutton Hall on Saturdays from noon to 1. And contact Janice Kimball for more information. And Sue Swetland has an announcement about crafts. And the craft room is 20 degrees cooler than it is here. <laughs> Any other announcements? Rachel, yes, please. Good morning. Uh, just a reminder that youth group starts up again tomorrow, Monday nights, 6 to 8 in the youth room. If you have anybody in grades 6 through 12 that are interested, let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Any other announcements? Okay, let us be a people of God and join me with me in the call to worship. We meet as a family in the presence of our God. We meet as brothers and sisters in Christ, accepting the responsibility that places upon us to love one another as you have loved us. We gather to listen for your voice in the midst of all the busyness of our lives. We meet as your light in the complex world and pray that through our words and our lives, others might be drawn into your family and join us in our acceptance of Jesus as our Savior and hear the invitation of the call to walk together and make your love real in this world through our actions of love and forgiveness in this new day. Come, let us give thanks for this day as we worship our God. And join with me in singing hymn number two, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
just have to tell you, you should experience it up here because the music just <laughs> truly brings with us. Join with me in the unison prayer of transformation and new life. Source of wholeness, we confess that sometimes our goals don't align with yours and we get lost. At times we have pursued power, knowledge, and wealth instead of you, who are the source of all. Today we name aloud that you are the bomb we need, and we turn ourselves toward you. You are steadfast in your love and justice. Help us to be the same. Help us to be a bomb to others as you are to us. And having offered that prayer, let us hear these words of assurance. The divine one is steadfast in love, justice, and righteousness. Know that we are all called, I'm going to repeat, we are all called, and empowered to do the same. In a chaotic world, we can know peace, and in a chaotic world, we can be at peace. May God's grace be a balm for us, and may we then be a balm to and for others. Amen. <laughs>
And join with me in the prayer of dedication. We thank, we thank you, loving God, God, that with your blessing you can multiply these gifts and your spirit in us can empower us to share it in the world so others may know your life-giving will and way. May we give thanks for your gifts as we witness to the world and help nurture your love in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I have the joy of welcoming Rachel Candy to come forward and offer the message for all ages this time. Thank you. Do you want the microphone? Can everyone hear me? Oh, I can hear me. <laughs> okay. So, it's the beginning of the school year, and um, you may have seen kids around your neighborhood um, walking to school or getting ready for school at the bus stop. And um, have you ever seen those little kids that have the big backpacks that are as big as they are? And what are they putting in those backpacks? I don't know. but. Um, some kids carry a lot to school. They carry all their textbooks, all their notebooks, everything. Um, I know I used to do that, even though some of them have lockers. But anyway, so <clears throat> as adults, we also carry a heavy backpack in a way. Um, we, here's our little demonstration backpack. Um, as adults, we have a lot of worries. Um, and kids have a lot of worries too, but they, uh, so anyway, we, we have a lot of worries. So some of them may be um, making sure we pay all our bills, add that to the backpack. Maybe it's um, worrying about how we interacted with people during the week. Um, maybe it's something small, like do we get everything we need for that vacation together? Um, or maybe it's, did we make the right choice um, and the right decision for us, or our kids, or anyone around us? So we carry this heavy backpack of full of worries. And we don't have to, because God helps us in our lives every single day. And if we trust in God to carry our worries for us, he will help us to get through life um, a little less worried. But if we trust God, things will go more smoothly. Um, so that is my lesson for today, trusting God with your backpack full of worries. <laughs> I'll say thank you, Rachel. Well said. <laughs> because some of us walk with very heavy backs, don't we? Bent over backs because of all the worries. Thank you so much for that. Well, today as we go into the time of sharing joys and concerns, there we go. I would first like to start off with thank you for everybody being here today in despite the humidity. I do hear there's going to be a break in the weather, and so that's part of my silent prayers, but maybe public prayers for us all. But I also know that we have several birthdays. I, Mr. Bentley is here celebrating 90, and I give thanks for that to share it with us here. But I also know there's a few others in our midst who have been present with us on a regular basis, such as Barbara Dutton and Sally Turner. Are there others here who have celebrated birthdays this week? I, yeah? Oh, OK. And Marilyn? Okay. Also, today's my daughter's birthday and my aunt's birthday, and I did a wedding last year for somebody whose birthday it is today, so I am aware of many birthdays. Let's sing happy birthday, okay? So, Sue, would you like to lead us? 
Would you like to lead us in happy birthday? <laughs> It's also the birthday, in some respects, of the fall season, the ongoing ministry of the church here as we launch into Rally Day and Homecoming Day. Uh, in many churches, they are launching large Sunday school programs. We're still hopeful for that someday. But we are continuing to do our ministry here as we are. And so I'm celebrating that with you today. I understand, are there, are there other joys that you wanted to lift up at this time? Yes? Um, I, I know that we have some prayer concerns, and so I thought if there are any joys, we would start with that. Hmm, we do have a potluck dinner. We're going to have a gathering after church, and I know that there was the community meals. I know that there are many people. Yes? We give thanks for all of those prayers that Lonnie has lifted up. And we're mindful that today we are in a safe place. Yes. And we do give thanks. And we walk together in the midst of all of that. And so, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. And so I also know that you're lifting up prayers for other places. Um, one of the places I heard in the news, I've been away in some respects with family, but I heard in Morocco there was an earthquake. And over 2,000 lives have been lost. And so there's another huge... Uh, tragedy. These are coming very quickly and we are all rocked and trying to figure out what's going on. But for the people in Morocco and the first responders and all the families who've lost more, O oh God of grace, hear our prayers and ongoing prayers for those in Lahaina trying to recover, realizing that there are many still that are unnamed who've been lost in the midst of all of that and across our nation as the storms are coming through. And I guess I should lift up a prayer for Hurricane Lee's path, that it goes this way and not straight up here as I've been hearing, that we might get hit in Connecticut again. And so just um, prayers for whatever comes. So God of grace, hear our prayers. And for all of us as we walk together, knowing that there are many who are struggling with medical concerns, um, I don't know if there are any specific that you would like to name at this time, Janice. Yes, um, Ann. Um, I do not want to ask for prayers for myself, but I have some follow-up testing this week, and I would appreciate some prayers. Okay, so Ann is lifting up prayers for herself as she goes in for more testing. And Rachel? I also have a follow-up this week, um, and I'll just have my chest, so just prayers for Okay, and prayers for Rachel. She goes in for more testing, and I saw, yes, Nick. Thank you. Okay. And Nick is lifting up prayers for all of those who lost their lives on 9-11 and who were affected. And as we as a nation went through that experience and tried to come to terms with who we are and how we be present in the world. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers as well. Yes. You. Ah, good. We'll have to find out why you're here afterwards at coffee hour. But um, if we give thanks for uh, He's lifting up prayers of thanksgiving for this beautiful sanctuary and the many hands that have built it but kept it going strong. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes.
Okay. A continuing medical prayers for all of those, for Liz and Nick as well, uh, as they go into more surgery and testing and recovery. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes. and prayers of uh, Thanksgiving for Emily's prayer for Grandparents' Day as we celebrate the gift of life, ongoing life. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes? I have a major concern. Yes? The way the students today and yesterday is that Russia has stated that Ukraine is nothing but a stepping stone, and they plan to engage NATO countries along their border next. I've been waiting to hear that one. Okay, so Lou is lifting up the prayers that we all have of concern for um, the boldness of one man to make a decision for the rest of the world. And may somehow or other somebody reach through and make a stop to that kind of an action. And may peace come through. And may, may the courage of, me, of many stop one man. O oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes. Ah. Okay, Doris loves history. So if you would like some information, there is a pamphlet here about the, the beauty of this church and how it was, it was created. And so for all these gifts, let us now move into a time of silent prayer. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. And Lord of mystery and creation, as we have gathered here this day, coming freely from our many different directions, seeking to become the body of Christ here at the Groton Congregational Church, we give thanks for that freedom, knowing that it could be stopped at times. We give thanks for the wonder of the gift of the words of scripture that have been passed down to us because of the courage of a few to not let the message of Jesus die. Help us to be those in 2023 to hear them and know that there is an invitation to also recognize that you are the still speaking God wanting to talk to each of our hearts and minds to hear the ongoing story and not just stay stuck in what was shared 2,000 years ago. Keep our hearts and minds open. If we become cold, out of protection and worry, melt those walls. As the choir just sang in their anthem, Help us to be your hands and your eyes and your feet. For as we have heard these prayers today, many with some joys, many with some medical concerns, one in particular of concern for our whole world, we realize that it is through each one of us that your love and grace and light are revealed and not just through a few. Help us to remember those words help us to remember that anthem and carry it forward in our lives and as we reach out to each other even those who we may think of as our enemies for Jesus said love your enemies as well the words of scripture are not always easy the gospel is not always easy but they have powerful meaning when we make them real in our lives and so I ask that you hear the prayers that we have lifted up this day, as well as the unspoken ones in our hearts, 
and guide us and bless us as we go forward as the bearers of your love, sharing the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to today's readings. The first reading is from Psalms 119, verses 33 through 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Be gracious to me according to your word. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, be gracious to me. And then we hear this letter from the, these words from the letter of Paul to the Romans in chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments say, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, <clears throat> therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is already the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk decently as in the day, not reveling in drunkenness, not in illicit sex and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And so may God bless these words of scripture that were written by one spirit coming down through the ages to speak to us this day and for these reflections that I offer to you this day. I don't know if you've ever heard this poem before, but I offer it to you. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out on the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who's moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who's gazing around her enormous, with her enormous and complicated eyes. And now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and she floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. But I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done that day? 
doesn't everything die at last and way too soon? Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? What do you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? These are the words of Mary Oliver. I've read that poem many, many times. And I've read it at a few funerals of people who knew that that poem had been a favorite poem of their beloved one. Mary Oliver is one whose work is inspired by nature rather than the human world, and it stems from her lifelong passion for solitary walks in the wild, and it's characterized by a sincere wonderment at the impact of natural imagery conveyed in language that is not fancy. In 2007, she was declared to be the country's best-selling poet. If you've not heard of her, I encourage you to go look for some of her other writings. They're absolutely beautiful, and they do come from a faith life as well. I'll be honest with you that that poem came to me many times, especially with that one line, what are you doing with your one wild and precious life? Part of that I have to share with you is because my daughter has had a son and gave him the middle name of Wilder. And that's because after many years of trying, she finally had this one and she figured he's beat all the odds and he's going to be a wild one. And you know what? He's given them a ride. (laughs) But many of you know that I have been given five weeks from my ministry to immerse myself in, in all of the wonder of a newborn child. And he came with many gifts as we each have done and come into this world. I was given permission, as Rachel unexpectedly shared with you today, to let go of all of my worries and concerns about this congregation and live in each day in a very different way. It was very precious time, and I'm going to engage you to just listen and let go of your worries for a moment and be in this beautiful sanctuary that many have sat in down through how many years? It's well over a century, I know that part. But I was able to be in that home and watch and witness amazing moments. You're gathering around, and I'm sorry he's not here at the moment, but you're gathering around, and we witnessed moments, and my son and his wife came down, and there were stories that were shared that moved me to tears and I had goosebumps. So that all of a sudden, I was experiencing my wild and precious life at a whole different level. Have you had one of those occasions recently? I hope you have one today. And I hope you have one over this weekend. But I was also wondering, how do we create those moments? In some respects, we can't, but we can. But I want to I wanna engage you. Out because that poem has been so powerful and it's asking you, what are you doing with your one wild and precious life? I have the privilege of standing here and speaking to you. And I could give you an academic sermon on the scripture passages. But I don't want to do that today. I want to engage you in trying to awaken something within you that may have been dormant for a while. Let go of those worries. I'm remembering the day that my daughter was born. It was a crystal blue sky day. And you know what those autumn days are like, right? When it's, you just can't get enough of it. The greens against that brilliant blue. On that day up in Bar Harbor, the QE2 was out in the harbor. It was wonderful. I had to press the button and say, ring the doorbell and say, can I come in and deliver a child? It was a very small hospital back then. Okay. And I stood there and I watched and I listened. The birds were singing. I was wide awake at that time. In this sanctuary, which was built by loving hands and hard work and the carrying of the stones to to build the foundation and things, there were many stories that were shared 
as they did the building of this sanctuary. There were many memories that were built, and they're in these stones and in these walls. Is Mr. Bentley nearby? Do you know if he's nearby? No? Okay. Because what I was going to share, and you can relay it to him, okay, is that we are celebrating his 90 years on this earth and his choice to be in our midst with family members who are having the joy of creating new memories while remembering your favorite ones while he can still hear them. And there will be moments of laughter and tears and belly aches from the laughing. And do you remember moments? And I'm teasing that from the rest of you as you gather today or some other time with people. Don't lose those times to say, do you remember? Today I invite you to be in this sacred sanctuary. And I'm going to ask you to pause at the moment and wiggle your toes. I'm serious. I want you to wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers. I mean, you sang it in that anthem, right? You sang it in, in the anthem. And I want you to look around at all who are here. I, seriously, I'm, I'm going to engage you very differently today. I want you to look around and see all who are here with you today and say hello. Okay? Just say hello. All right? We are all children of God, and we've each come in with our unique gifts. And I think it, this is because I did a retreat two weekends ago, and it would just filled me with such heart and song. Okay, so I'm going to do that here today, that we're walking together, and we're walking each other home, whether we do it often or whether we do it rarely. And I want you to, again, look around and see who is here, and remember, we are human beings. We are not human doings. We are not here just to accomplish certain, certain tasks. We are here to experience one another with hearts and souls and minds, and listen to each other. Not just accomplish tasks and then pass each other by. That's not why we were here. That's not why Jesus was here. And that's not what was in that anthem. We are here listening and watching and engaging in activities. We are building and breaking down and trying to figure out how do we let those teachings on love and forgiveness become the primary message of our lives. Not just money and business and accomplishments. I, I want you to think about when Jesus was walking the earth, and anybody can stand up and pretend to be Jesus if you want and walk around, okay? I, I'm serious, okay? If somebody wants to walk around and be Jesus, please do. You know, walking around the earth and sitting with the disciples at tables, maybe under a tree outside to get, enjoy some shade, and with many other people. They were in various settings, and they would share stories, just like you guys are doing now. And they would share meals, or they would help a person. Or they would watch him offer a healing that took them all by surprise. Imagine being there for the feeding of the 5,000. Think of all of those precious moments and the thousands that never got written down into the Bible. The memories that were shared and the love that was shared. The love that changed lives, no matter how angry and disappointed and frightened a person was. Because we all have those moments as well. Those, those moments where love suddenly got through that defense, of that wall of defense that we all have that protects us because we've been hurt and we've been saddened and we witnessed tragedies and sometimes those tragedies touched our lives real close. But love breaks through that wall of defense. Tears are shed and the relationships deepen because we know that love is real. Throughout all of these, we get to that moment where we realize how precious life is and how quickly it can pass. 
I'll be honest with you, I want to do a prayer that will stop people from racing over the Gold Star Bridge. I get frightened every single day I come here. Today, I almost was in another accident. And I don't know what to do. I want to put a big bold sign up that says, please slow down. Why are you rushing? Are you ready to meet God already? You know, come on. <laughs> stop. But throughout all of these, life is real and life is precious each and every moment. And it is so easy to forget about that. And so how do I help you to be here and now and help to decide whether you want to make life heaven or hell now? Don't worry about the future. That'll take care of itself. Here and now. I'm going to offer you two things by St. Francis. The prayer of St. Francis is, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And so to bring my sermon to a close, more or less, I want to take a moment to engage you in another quote by St. Francis. And this is a tease for you, okay? He goes, preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. Okay? Preach the gospel and, if necessary, use words. And so those words speak volumes to me today. And so I don't want to go any further without asking you to consider these words from today's lectionary reading from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 18, verse 20. And I cannot believe it was the opening line of the anthem, which sent me right into tears. All right? The words are, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am also there. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am also there. I'm not going to say another word. I want you to take a couple of minutes to go into silence together. And what do those words mean to you and nobody else? I don't want any academic remarks. I want it from your heart. Where two or three are gathered in, in your name, you are also there. What does that mean?
If anything came to you, write it down. And now I'm going to ask you to wiggle your hands and wiggle your toes again. Did you sense Jesus's or God's presence here in your midst? As the disciples did when Jesus was walking the earth in his robe, in flesh and blood, with his sandals and sometimes in his bare feet, sharing stories and laughing with them, and sometimes weeping. Sometimes he slept on the mat on the ground on the floor, and he actually woke up grumpy and grouchy because he hurt. What is it that you heard that where two or three are gathered in my name, you are also there? And I will close my sermon time rereading that poem, the closing part. I don't know exactly what a prayer is, but I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day, she wrote. But tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Amen. And now I invite you to turn to hymn number 420 in your hymnals and sing the hymn, I Come With Joy, to share with us the sacrament of communion. And please turn to the bulletin insert to share with us the Sacrament of Communion. As the seed which was scattered to all corners of the field comes together to make bread on our table, 
so God's people gather from all corners of the world to share the great banquet of thankfulness and hope. At God's table, there are no divisions. At God's table, all are welcome to share in the bounty of abundant life. Here at God's table, we join with all who seek to follow the way and follow the voice of love. Here we taste the grace eternal. Here we know that God is good. And let us come together in the spirit of prayer. The spirit of the living God be with you all. In this season, when we enjoy the harvest from last fall, we pause to give thanks to God. It is a good thing to give thanks for all God has given us. God of growth, God of harvest, God of gifts. Here we pause to give thanks for the abundance of our lives, for the fruit of the earth, for the food on our tables, for the love of our brothers and sisters and faith around the world, for the promise of hope in a world given to despair, for the possibility of peace in a world torn apart by violence. For these and many other things, we offer our thanks and praise, and we remember the stories of our forefathers and foremothers in the faith, people like Sarah and Abraham, Miriam and Moses, Peter and Mary, prophets and leaders, and all who have proclaimed your hope over the centuries. We lift up the saints who have gone before us to teach about the possibilities of being your people. And let us continue in prayer. In the middle of our thankfulness, we give special thanks for a man from Nazareth, Jesus, the one we call Christ, child of Mary, child of grace. He came to teach about the wonders of your love. He came to break down the walls of division among your people. As he ate with the misunderstood and the least of his world, he showed us what the glorious banquet of life could be like. We give thanks for his witness and commitment to the way. We give thanks for his healing of broken spirits and broken bodies. We give thanks for his life, his death, and his resurrection. Here now, as we gather at the table to which Jesus calls us, we remember another table long ago and far away. At that table, Jesus gathered with friends to tell again the ancient story of liberation from bondage. And then at the end of the meal, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and passed it among them, saying, This is my body, which is being broken for all. Take and eat. And whatever you eat, whenever you eat it, do so and remember me. And then he took a cup of wine and he blessed it and passed it to them, saying, This is the seal of the new covenant. Take and drink and remember. And so, God of the cross, the empty tomb and the banquet, we eat and drink and remember giving thanks for the love Jesus poured out on all he met. And please join me with this part. Jew and Gentile, estranged ones and saints, healthy and broken. And in our remembering, we state the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And let us continue. You, uh, you call us to sing the songs of faith in places both familiar and strange. You call us to share the banquet of faith with longtime friends and new acquaintances. Pour out your spirit on this table and these people. As we eat and drink, may we feel the wind of the spirit in our hair, the fire of the spirit in our bellies, and the love of the spirit in our hearts. May the presence of the spirit make this meal an occasion of transformation as we gather to eat it together. God of the banquet that is and is to come, on this day we gather with people all around the world to share this meal and say, Creator, our source of love, Christ, love incarnate, Spirit, love's flowing power, be praised now and forever. Amen. And so the bread we break is the bread of life, and the cup that we share is the cup of life. 
These are the gift of God for the people of God. Come and eat, for the banquet awaits. And so through the broken bread, we are invited to participate in the body of Christ, ministering to you in Christ's name. It is with joy that I offer you the bread. share the bread of life. And through the cup of blessing, we are invited to participate in the new life that Christ brings because of the forgiveness of sins. The past is gone and today is a brand new day. Ministering to you in Christ's name, I offer you the cup.
let us share the cup of salvation. I invite you now to turn back to your bulletin insert and share in the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, O oh God, because in your own free gift of love, you have reached out to us. You refreshed us at your table, touched our deepest needs, and called us to a life shared in memory and hope. Send us forth with courage and joy in the name of Jesus Christ, so that we too may become bread and peace for one another and the world. Bless us now as we give thanks for this meal and go renewed out into the world to share your profound love. Amen. And so let us close our service with a very simple hymn, number 717, Let All Things Now Living. forth giving thanks for this time together. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God lift up his countenance upon you always and grant you peace. Amen.